Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to make this, which is a very simple gasket. You'll notice that it has quite a few um, rules governing its shape, certain patterns that we can use in Fusion 360 to make this easier and more precise. Um, I'm also going to be talking about what constraints are in Fusion 360 and how to go about using them to build something correctly. Eventually you'll have a sketch that looks like this. Um, and one other thing that I did before you do anything else, you should go into your preferences to change your dimensioning settings so that you can see it in fractional units instead of decimals. So you can do that in your preferences. So if you go to the top right corner and go to preferences, it'll open up a window and from there you can go to foot and inch display format and choose fractional which makes a lot more sense for foot and inches to be fractional and then press OK and once you do that it if you already had things that were in decimal you might have to double click them press enter and it'll change them to fractions for you now I'm gonna be working in this fractional format so it's important that you make that change before you do anything else so now we are gonna get started alright gonna create a new sketch and this design is based off of measurements that I took of the original gasket. Now, that should also be measurements that you have access to, um, but um, I am going to be referring to those based on the measurements I took, so hopefully yours are the same. Now, I'm working on the top view, and I'm going to start by creating a rectangle. Now, this rectangle is going to be one and one quarter by two and three-eighths, okay? And all I do is I type in the fractions exactly like I would if I were to write it, except I use the slash, which is the one beside the question mark. Um, it's the same key as the question mark, you just don't press shift, and that gives you the slash. And then I have my main rectangle. This is the overall dimensions of the shape, okay? Then, I need to do what I was showing you of creating lines on the midpoints. I'm going to move it coincident with this first line. And then, also, midpoint here. You can see the triangle. Now I know that those are on the midpoint of this edge and coincident. Then over here, I do the same thing to find the center of my rectangle. So now, if you grab it, if you grab it to move it, like here for example, you shouldn't be able to move it at all because it's locked to the corner, okay? It should be all locked. None of this should move at all. If you try to grab it, it shouldn't move, okay? If any of it starts moving, then you might have a problem. Now, once that's locked, the first step that I did is I created the main circle in the middle because it's the biggest, it's easiest to do. So the biggest circle um, or there's a hole in this gasket. So if you refer to this image up here, you can see that it has a hole in it. Well, that gasket hole is going to be uh, 7 eighths so of diameter. 7 eighths inches diameter. And it's in the exact center. You can see the constraint. It's in the midpoint. If I try to grab it, I can't. There's no way to move it. It's in the exact. That's how I know it's in the exact center. I shouldn't be able to make it bigger or smaller because it's constrained to the seven eighths size. Okay, it's exactly seven eighths. Now, the other circle that is um, in that. Um, oh, I accidentally pressed finish sketch for some reason. Uh, I need to go back to. What the heck? Did I do? I was on such a roll here, and now it's all gone. Uh, sketch. Oh, I accidentally pressed this. 
So if you accidentally do what I did and go here, you're still in the sketch view. It's just the wrong tab. So there, now I'm back. OK, so now the next step is to make the bigger one, like I was saying. So we're going to make another circle. This circle is going to be 1 and 1 quarter inches high which also happens to be exactly the same height as our overall height, one and one quarter. So the diameter should line up exactly. If I zoom in, no matter how far I zoom in, it should be precise. Now, there might be like a slight error of some kind. And then that might just be a rendering error, but we can also double check to make sure if they're in the same spot. So if they if they are in the same spot, like I shouldn't be able to move either any of these circles. If I zoom in here, that seems pretty precise. That seems good. So this is the exact same as this, which is the exact same as the diameter here, or the height here. So that's all good. Now, the next step is to make the circles on the right and left. Now, these are a little bit more tricky we have to have some careful measurements of some of these things but the first thing we know is that it's on this line and we know that the smaller one is 9 uh, or yeah 932 so 932 we know that okay that's confirmed but the question is where is it on this line we right now it's constrained to the line but it could go anywhere what we need to do is we need to set the distance. Well, I can tell you that the distance is also 932. So in here, I click the dot, and then I click this edge, and then I type in 932 here. So now it's locked. I cannot move it. It's literally un impossible for me to move it at all because now it's constrained to this location. The next is to create another circle. And this one is 9 sixteenths. And it's in the exact same spot. Place center point here. 9 sixteenths. Done. And now this one should not move because it's in the same location centered on that spot. If I zoom in here, it should be nice and accurate. Now it might overlap a little bit due to rendering errors, but I mean, if they're in the same spot and it's 9 sixteenths, then that's what we're talking about. And it should be coincident here as well. Okay. Now, once we have those two circles, the last step is to create a tangent line. So this is another constraint. Now, if you remember your math, tangent means that it's exactly touching the circle on only one point. Okay, so it's crossing through the circle on only one point. Now to do that, first we select, let's select one of the circles. And then we make a line and we follow until it makes that tangent symbol, which is this symbol, circle with a line on it. So we move it and boom, now it is tangent. But the problem is this one isn't tangent. So we have to press escape then press the tangent tool, click this, and then click this. Now both lines are tangent, and I literally cannot move this line. I cannot move these points anywhere because there's only one point on, every, on any circle where lines are tangent. Any other point, it's not tangent. The line will go through the circle twice. Like if I take a line and I go like this, right? It's not tangent. It's touching on two spots. So we want it to only touch on one spot. That way it looks nice. Now, we do the same thing on the bottom. Go here, tangent here, then tangent this to this. And now it is nice and tangent on all of it. And that's basically all you need to do for those circles. So then you do the same thing on this side. So we know that this is 932. And then we know that the distance from this dot to this edge is 932 and we know that this larger circle is oops I did not specify the size of the circle 9 
sixteenths, done. And then we know that this is tangent here. We know that this is tangent here. And then I just quickly tangent these. You can actually keep the tool and then keep clicking things that you want to constrain. So if you look closely, don't just look at the lines. Also look at the tangent symbols and other constraint symbols. Something else you can do is you can actually specify that these lines can be construction lines because we don't need them to be part of our build. So this line here, you go over here, tell it to be a construction line. This line here, you could also tell it to be a center line, I guess, but construction line is fine. And same with these lines. So this line, this line, this line, and this line. So because they're construction lines, it won't actually count towards the object. It'll actually not allow you to extrude from those lines, which means that they don't they'll, they won't get in the way. And this actually looks quite nice now. You can start to see the shape that these are construction lines. Now you can start to see the actual shape that we're planning to make. There's only one thing missing, and that's the little um, gusset e piece that kind of goes in. It's like a little thing that kind of cuts in. But before we make that, let's save so that we have everything. And I'm going to save and I'm going to say um, finished outline. You're actually supposed to give a description of what you did because then it allows you to keep track of your version history. So this is V2 and you can see what uh, all the versions are. So I can say, oh, this was finished outline. Oh, I get it now. All right. So how do we make that gus gusset, gusset thing that cuts in? Um, well, that's going to be 532 depth and 1 8 height. And it's on the center. So what did I do for that? Well, to do that, I created a rectangle, but I went to the Create menu, and I created a rectangle, which is called a center rectangle. That allows me to start by specifying the center point of the rectangle, and then expand from the middle. And then what I did is make it be 1 8 uh, on the height, and then 532 on the width. So that's a good start. But now I want to move it. Now it's on this line, I can position it. So what I did is I actually, what can you guess we need to do? What do you think, I, what kind of constraint I need to make it go from here to here? Well, it's the tangent constraint again. So we're using the tangent constraint a lot in this assignment. So we take the tangent constraint, go from here to here. And now these two are in line. And all I have to do is fill in this tiny little gap. So I'm going to go from here to here. And now I know that that's in line. And I go from here to here. Zoom in a bit so it snaps. There we go. So now that's good. And actually, this line can be a construction line because I don't need it. Um, and the last thing is, is it actually has a circle shape. Now that part's a bit tricky. So what I do is I know that the circle's diameter is going to be the same as this height. So it's going to be the 1 8 So I go 1 8 But the position of the circle, once again, is going to be tangent to this edge. So we do tangent to here. Wow, we use the tangent constraint so many times. It's almost like it's a really handy tool when working with circles. Yes, it is. So all of this is really useful. This line is also a construction line. We don't actually need it as part of our design. So we've turned that into a construction line now. Um, and everything else, I think, think is done. I think that's it. So let's save it one more time. So added notch. Okay. So now I can see in my version history once it updates. So this is V2. Let's wait for V3. 
if I press this, I can see, oh, this is when I added the notch, this is when I finished the outline, this is when I created it, and that's really handy. So now I can press Finish Sketch, and I can extrude this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Extrude button, and then I need to select parts. So I'm going to extrude this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Now notice, because I turned that into a construction line, it naturally selected, and I turned this into a construction line, it naturally selected the parts that make it um, the shape that I want it to be, which is great. So, now I have all of this. How high should it be? Well, gaskets are pretty thin. You might need to measure the actual gasket that we have, but I'm going to go with 132 for now. It might actually be even thinner than that, but that's a, enough that we can get a good idea of what it is. Then press save one more time and call it uh, extruded the gasket. And we are done! That's the entire design. And you just gotta make sure that you hand in a render of your final version of the gasket plus I also want to see the sketch so I want you to turn the sketch on turn the body off and then go and edit the sketch so that I can see the dimensions I want to be able to see all the nice dimensions that you made of your gusset and, and also do it in the right orientation so like that so I can see all the work that you did to make it, not just the final design. That is if you're in this class. If you're just a random person from YouTube who found this video and is watching it to learn about how to make gaskets, well, welcome to my channel. Anyway, I think that's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat uh, or in the comments and um, like the video if you like it and hopefully it was useful. Thanks for watching.